what do you want from us? Inception. Is it possible? Of course not. It's not true. Recently, Chile became the first country to promote neural rights and implement what we call the Inception Law, a law that protects people from mind control technology. Although no one's really gonna hack into your dream to extract information or plant an idea, today we're gonna talk about what exactly is this law protecting against and how advanced are we now in terms of neural technology. So the whole idea of having neural rights began with Professor Rafael Neustadt. Yeah, that's Spanish. A neurobiologist who was involved in Obama's brain initiative and realized that the use and development of advanced neurotechnology should be regulated with ethical guidelines. Proposing five additions to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, he later formed the Neural Rights Initiative that ended up helping Chile with their Neural Protection Bill and their Constitutional Amendment. Although the details may vary, based on what I found, the law can be boiled down into three fundamentals. One is to set limit to neural technology that can read and write in our brain, which is basically extraction and inception. Two is to set limit to neural algorithms that can decode and analyze our neural data. Three is to allow equal access to such technology so it is not only limited to the very rich. Now you may wonder if such technology actually exists. It almost sounds like some science fiction where a computer can read your mind or even download information into your brain. But if we take a step back and look at our technology today, you will know we are not very far from it. Whenever our brain engages in an activity, our neurons will fire and the electrical signal can be picked up by EEG. While oxygen consumption increases in certain parts of our brain, the changes in blood flow can also be recorded by fMRI. Although there are more advanced techniques like MEG that can better monitor and measure our brain activity, just by considering the basics, we can already demonstrate the superpowers of neural technology and neural algorithms. If you don't believe me, let's check out some examples. Here is a video clip that only you can see. Now, do you think the computer can figure out what you're watching simply by reading your mind? Well, the answer is yes. By putting you into an fMRI machine, scientists can already decode and reconstruct your facial experience using a computer model. Although the reconstructed video is pretty blurry, mind that this experiment was 10 years ago and it was blurry for a valid reason. To begin with, the subjects have to watch hours of movie trailers in an fMRI machine and let the computer learn what images causes what activity in their facial cortex. This helps the computer to build a dictionary that translates between facial patterns and patterns of neural activity. Next, the researchers download 5,000 hours of random YouTube videos and let the computer generate predictions of neural activity for each video. This helps the computer to build a library that will help reconstruct your video clip. Now as you watch the video clip that only you can see, what the computer does is to select 100 video clips from the library that will produce the most similar brain activity and average them together to produce the reconstruction. But because the library is too small compared to the real world that we see, the computer simply doesn't have enough data to reproduce exact matches leaving the reconstructed video with poor resolution. Now, although this technology can only decode what we see, but not what we think, because it is limited to the facial cortex, but not higher functioning areas, this research can potentially be useful as we try to decode what people are visualizing, maybe during a dream, a memory, or even an imagination. In the previous example, we showed how people can possibly read your mind with an imaging device and a computer model. However, it is far from mind control if such technology cannot affect your brain. Well, in the following example, I'm going to show you how scientists use neural technology to create hallucination in mice, making them see things that aren't really there. 
So both experiments made use of optogenetics, an advanced technique that involves using light to stimulate neurons that have been genetically modified. It replaces the traditional method that needs to implant an electrode. Now, despite the difference in methodology, what both experiments are trying to do is to activate certain cells in the brain and cause the mice to see certain patterns that do not exist. To begin with, the scientists train the mice to lick a water tube whenever they see vertical bars, and not to whenever they see horizontal bars. Then, we record their brain activity to find out what neurons are consistently fired when seeing each of the images. As the researchers dim the image and end up showing nothing at all, what we find is that simply by shining a light at specific neurons, the mice will continue to lick or not lick as if it can still see the vertical or horizontal image. Although we can't tell whether the mice can really see the hallucinated image, Based on the experiment, we know that neural technology can potentially mess with our perception of the real world and prompt us to make certain decisions. If it can trigger a sensory perception in an animal now, maybe someday in the future, it can elicit a thought or emotion in a person and end up changing our behavior. So far, neural technology seems like a threat to our privacy, free will, and personal identity. As brain-computer interface develops, direct communication between the mind and machine does seem to be something we should keep an eye on. However, to be fair, let's not forget all the goods it can bring, or has already brought us. From cochlear implants that helps people to hear, to retinal implants that helps people to see, we have already been enjoying the benefits brought by neurotechnology. Not to mention robotic prosthesis that can help millions of people who have lost their arms or legs to move again. Now, just earlier this year, Elon Musk's Neuralink successfully implanted electrodes into a monkey's brain and allowed it to play a video game with just its mind. Although human trials have not yet begun, if successful, it would be a great news for people with paralysis, who would then be able to control phones and computers with just their brain and be able to communicate with their loved ones. My name is Stephen Hawking. It's American. Anyways, that's all for today. If you're interested in this topic, let me know in the comments below. And make sure you check out my video on the world's first artificial eyeball. And you will find out what a Thor can actually see with his new prosthetic eye.